Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Michael McCarville, and in this episode, what I'm going to share with you is how to make great looking coordinated metal for structures, roofs, and siding. And if you use this method, it's not the only method that's out there, and I'm certainly not an expert, but this has worked really well for me. So I'm going to give you guys some kind of some tips, some ideas, and maybe some shortcuts to hopefully get you um, up and running with uh, doing corrugated metal roofing or siding. Now, we're also going to talk about some adhesives as well and uh, some other things, but this is generally just how to do, how to prepare the corrugated metal material. Uh, you'll notice that there's uh, styrene kits out there. There's uh, metal foil. There's also uh, paper. I've seen other stuff kind of like a pressed wood material uh, to represent corrugated metal. So I'm going to focus on these two materials primarily, but there's lots and lots of other materials out there that you can adapt some of these methods to. So let's get going. So the first step is preparing the base material. Now what we want to do is give it kind of a, a uniform color and make sure that none of the underlying material shows through. You don't want silver showing through. You don't want any of the paper material showing through or whatever other material you're happening to use. So I actually use one of two methods. Um, sometimes I'll put a black primer down and other times I'll put a rust primer down. Now I'm going to show you both, but I'm going to show you the black primer method first. So what I basically do is take a uh, paint primer that is a black pigment and I'll spray paint that and that'll go on to the material. Now in order to get uh, as much material process as possible, uh, you can see what I'll do is I'll take a roll of painter's tape and I'll just put that on a piece of cardboard and I'll roll it up and make it, um, you know, stick it down on, on the, on the uh, piece of cardboard, but I'll do three rows of that. And then I can just line up my material and I can mass produce a whole bunch of this stuff. You can see on there, there's probably 20 pieces of material and that's this thin uh, paper stuff. Um, you could go with even more painter's tape and uh, you know, do more of more rows of this, do like two rows. But anyway, the purpose of this is for us to not have to go back and every time we want to create a rusted roof or wall that we have to go and process this. So I want to create a whole bunch of stuff at one time. Uh, it's just going to save us time down the road. And then you have a, a kind of, you know, a little supply of material that you can use. So enough said. Okay, so if you're going to use the rusty metal look, then um, what I do is I just basically take a uh, Rust-Oleum uh, metal rust-colored primer, and I use that. Uh, in this example, I've already used the black, so when I spray paint the rust over the top, it seems redundant. But we're not going to do a complete covering of the black with the rust. We're going to kind of do it in spots so it's about 90% covered, but there's going to be a little bit of places where that that black primer shines through and we're still going to cover it with additional layers of colors but what what it gives you is it gives you a little bit of depth and the rust color on top sometimes doesn't get it into all those little creases so we're creating shadows as we're doing this okay this is the fun part this is when you really feel like you're being an artist um, what you do is you take a whole bunch of uh, chalk powder, there's uh, weathering powders that are made professionally. You can get those little boxes of uh, art chalk and just carve that up and make it yourself. Um, in this example, we're using pan pastels. So it, these come in art stores. Uh, these are actually really easy to find and a lot of different colors. And you can see I've got, uh, what do I have? Seven different colors up there. Um, not this one isn't even one of them. So I, in this example, I used those seven colors, and I'll put that list down below in the notes. But you can see I didn't I didn't sit there and try to make all of the pieces perfect because that's not the purpose of this. The purpose is to give us variety. Um, so what we do is we take a little bit of one color, and you can see in the bottom example, there's kind of like a uh, a brown down there, then there's kind of a bright red. That's probably a little too bright in some applications. In other ones, that's probably perfect. And then it fades in colors up above. Uh, so that's bands of seven different colors. And then when I what I what I then have is I have material that I can use, and I can kind of pick and choose which ones look uh, perfect or which ones don't. And it, 
at the same time, I'm going to have variety. Okay, so before we even start working on our corrugated metal, um, the first thing we want to do is make sure that we know where we're going to place it. Uh, one thing I, I really encourage everyone to do is draw a lot of parallel lines on the material that they're going to place the, um, the corrugated. Now, if you have, say you're putting it over scribe siding, you already have that, those lines in place. You don't need to worry about it. Uh, in this is, example, I'm actually using two different kinds of corrugated lengths. So I needed an eight foot section, a 10 foot section, measured it off, drew lines, and I'm, I'm ready to go. And at that point, it's just cutting up the uh, lengths, either eight foot or 10 foot, and then uh, applying it onto the material. Okay, so now that we've got our lines, in this example, I'm actually using the vertical supports, the, the uh, laser cut studs in the wall and I'm using that to align. In the roof, I'm actually gonna use those lines that we drew. So once we know if it's eight foot or 10 foot, uh, which are, are pretty typical corrugated metal sizes, what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut it as we, as we need it. And in this example, um, I'm just going ahead and putting on uh, individual pieces. Now in this example, I'm actually using the paper material and this is just stripped so it's already to the right width and I'm just cutting these the eight foot lengths that I need for the wall, which happen, that wall happens to be eight feet. Uh, in the corrugated metal, you'd have to cut these into strips along the length of the, um, you know, the, going with the grain of the corrugated metal. Um, and then you'd have to uh, cut this as you went along. So um, one point about this is, okay, so pretty straightforward. We just hit a window a uh, really sharp razor blade or exacto knife i would prefer an exacto knife fresh blade before you do any of these type of processes because you're really going to want that when you're cutting out the material you could cut it to fit but sometimes the the piece of corrugated metal doesn't really fit the window opening very well so if you glue it in place really well with in this example on this wall we're using super glue just acc cement uh, in this example what we're doing is we're going to glue it in, in place all around the window opening really well because when it dries, we're going to come back and we're going to trim that extra material that's covering the window opening. And we really want a razor blade that's really sharp, really want it brand new if we can do that. Okay, so just a quick word about adhesives. Uh, we're using super glue, ACC cement in this example, but a lot of times people will use ad adhesives that are uh, made of kind of a rubber cement type variety. There's a couple of different brands out there. I know Walther's Goo and uh, Plyobond are two very popular ones. Uh, there's other ones out there as well. Um, but again, you're probably going to know within the two, first piece of corrugated material or two, if the material, the, the adhesive that you're using is not really cutting it. So it's either not adhering enough, you're not getting enough coverage, or it's way too difficult to put on. So let's take a look at some of the other adhesive ideas that I've used in the past, and some of them actually speed this up. For example, this, these two walls here went around the corner, everything got trimmed down and, and it looks great. But uh, one thing you'll notice is I've used super glue in this example, and literally super glue that I put into, um, uh, just out onto a piece of material, and then I used a toothpick and applied it individually. That's really time consuming. It gives you a good um, you know, solution. And on the paper material, that's excellent. The rubber cement stuff, not so much. But uh, what I can tell you is there's better solutions out there. So let's take a look at some of those. Okay, so one alternative is to use a material from 3M called Super 77. I think they make a couple different varieties of this, but this is the one I've used. Uh, I was introduced to this on a uh, Banta, Mo Banta Model Works kit. Uh, Bill Banta had this in his instructions, and I thought, well, that's interesting. Let me try that. And, uh, man, this is a time saver. This is great. Uh, you do have to mask off the area that you're working on just to make sure that you don't, you know, spray too much of it. It is sticky. It'll kind of get on your fingers and stuff if you're not really careful. Um, and it just, it, it cleans up, but... It's, you can just start getting this material on other steps. So working on, on a small roof or in a small section, spray it, get the material, you're corrugated down, and then move on to the next section. But you're constantly having to mask things off. 
So it's not a perfect solution, but it's a pretty darn good one. Now, when we built the uh, the boathouse, which is actually what we turned into the tram house, um, I did that, but I laid the roof section out flat. Um, really good idea if you're going to use this stuff to work on a flat surface because you're going to have to work quick. And one of the things I did is I actually taped the roof section down on the underside so it wouldn't move around on me. And I had all my materials ready to go. I had tweener, tweezers, and I had um, all the cut pieces ready to go. And then I could just, you know, and you, you work pretty fast, partly because you have to with this material. But the other part is because all you're really doing is literally dropping corrugated metal pieces into place. So it's a slick solution. And I've used this on a bunch of kits. And uh, this is really my favorite method of doing it. But there is another one that I just found out. So let's talk about that. Depending on what you're going to do, this solution may actually be pretty awesome for you. Um, and I will tell you that this came off of one of the uh, Bantam Model Works kits for the Ofer Loop, and this is the ro this is the roof to the tram house. Now, this is kind of a monster. If I were to do this um, toothpick by toothpick at a time for pieces of corrugated, this would take forever. So. I thought, well, maybe I'll use the Super 77 because that's probably going to be um, a good solution. But then I got to mask off sections over and over again. And then when I get some of this material down, I have to now mask off not only just the stuff I don't want to spray, but also the section of the roof that already has shingles on it. And I don't want to tear the shingles up. But, so anyway... I thought, well, this is a solution, and I can do this. I can certainly do it with, you know, other material as well that we've already talked about, different kinds of adhesives. But I found something cool. This I found at a recent train show, and this is a Chooch Enterprises peel and stick tape. Now, this is not the only company that makes this type of thing. Um, I know Wild West Models makes a tape. Uh, there's others out there as well, and it's made specifically for a, a fixing roofing material. And you can see in the photo, what you do is you cut this material to the size, and I cut this full size to this roof. I did one side, then I did the other. And um, what's cool about it is when you're putting it down, you don't have to mask off the other side. You don't have to work fast unless you're going to have this out in dust and stuff for the next four years, that would be a problem. But you can literally, um, you know, tape this down to the surface. I actually used a uh, uh, just painter's tape, and I taped the backside down, and I just sat down and worked on it. Um, I already had lines drawn on it. And what you do, you can see I have the right section. Those pieces are already in place. The middle, that's just this tape. And it, it takes a little finesse to try to get the uh, the backer, the white backer off, put it down, and then the yellow backer. The yellow backer comes off easy. The white backer, not so much. So it, it does take a little bit of a uh, work to get that done. Not a big deal. But once you get that down, then um, what you see in the center is just this material stuck to the wood. That's it. It's clear, so you can still see through your alignment marks. Brilliant. Um, and then... What I did is I would just take a pair of scissors and I would just cut out another section and I'd leave whatever I was working on uh, that I wasn't working on, I'd leave that covered. Uh, you could tear the whole thing off and just go, but I was kind of wanting to, you know, I didn't know if I was going to get called away or something. So, and this took so much less time than this, which takes a lot less time than super glue or Walter's goo or anything else. Um, the reason why I did this on the roof and not the walls, you remember, the walls were uneven. So there was all those um, laser cut studs and stuff. So I, I really wasn't able to, I could have, but I really wasn't going to be able to get enough adhesion to that. So just because I wanted to make sure it was all the pieces were on there for good and didn't I didn't have to come back, I, I did super glue on the walls. But I did this on the roof. Now let me tell you, I'd have to think really hard if I wanted to do super glue again. This where that where it would have taken me probably two hours, three hours to do this. I probably had this whole roof done in, in 30 minutes. 30 minutes. 
That's ridiculous. So anyway, I got a pack of these at a local train show, and uh, then I knew my uh, buddy had bought a couple of packs, and I convinced him to give me one of his. <laughs> so we'll be using that a lot in the future. Okay, so that's where we're at. That is the finished um, wall and roof section. We still got some more stuff to do. Um, that'll come out in a later episode. But um, you'll notice that the windows are all cut out. The material is all put on. Two different methods for putting the uh, corrugated metal material onto the structure. So what we're going to look at next is we're going to look at uh, solutions after the fact. So we've already got our material cut to length. We've got it glued on our structure, and it looks pretty good, but there's some stuff that can really make this pop. So let's take a look at those. Okay, so corrugated metal. It's metal. It wears out. It gets rusty and holes rust through, and it needs to get replaced. So one of the things you can do is instead of just going with red, you can go with gray. Use gray primer. Um, you can also mix it. So in this example, this was a mine. This is a Wild West Models kit. And one of the things that the customer wanted was they wanted to see a little bit of gray material mixed in with the rest of it. So it's not all kind of monotone like the last kit that I just showed you. So since this customer wanted that variety, all I did was prepare two different types of corrugated metal. So we had the rust red color. And at the same time, I used a light. Uh, light gray primer material as well. And so I'm just doing the same thing with two different colors. And now I have some gray in the stock of that. Now I have some red. And then I'm just swapping the pieces out. And the nice thing about it, when you when you prepare that big panel of material and you cut it all up, the stuff gets mixed up because of how you're working on it. You don't have to sit there and go, oh, let me arrange these in a certain pattern. The stuff's going to get mixed up as you're working on it. You're moving around on the desk. You put it in a bag, a drawer, whatever. Um, in this case, we're, we're going to have gray and red, so we'll probably keep those separate. But in the end, I can kind of choose which panels I want to look like they got replaced and which ones didn't. So the top of the roof, I didn't get a lot of um, um, maintenance or anything. Um, those pieces got replaced and a few uh, stragglers. And other than that, the rest of the roof wore out pretty well. So you could do the reverse and you could just make it all gray, but maybe, you know, a couple of pieces or you know, uh, darker gray or lighter gray or something. So uh, you have a lot of different options of the material and the color palette that you go with. Okay, so before we finish, um, the, there is a couple other little techniques that you can use. Now, once you get the corrugated metal uh, material on the roof and then the caps on there, you got the layers, everything looks great, we're done. Well, you're never really done, right? Because rust never sleeps. So let's go take a look at what you can do as well. So in, in this, this is a Best Trains kit. This is the Aspen Lumber Company. This is the back side of it. You'll notice on some of the, the panels, I took a toothpick and a little bit of tester's rust. It's a little brighter. And I took and I chose a few spots to just put a few specks here and there. And that shows that it's not just a uniform roof, but there's also some other rust things happening too. Um, you can also do kind of a, a rust area where it's a little brighter on the edges and it gets darker in the center. So take a look at some prototype photos because a lot of times I'm pretty much modeling off of a photo of an exact structure. Um, take a look at that and look and just see how the rust is advancing across the material. But this one got a lot of little rust specks and stuff on it and it really made it look like it wasn't just kind of a uniform roof anymore with a couple different tones of the corrugated metal. But now you're starting to see these little rust spots pop up in, in areas that maybe it looks like it's about to break through the material. And finally, one of the things that I've done um, pretty much on most of the models that you've seen, but I did it a lot more uh, vividly on these two. So this is basically the same kit with just different uh, color treatments, but the roof sections, once the rusting was done, I went back over it with some black wash in certain areas to kind of give it some a little bit of streaking and stuff. You can do that on shingled roofs and things too. But in this one, what it does is it kind of doesn't make the roof look quite so patchwork by the time you're done. Um, if you're going for that look, that's great. But uh, one of the things that this does is it looks like there's some dirt and basically, uh, you know, grime and weathering and stuff that's flowed down from one panel to the next. So it kind of ties it together. 
you can use washes for black you can use all different kinds of um, uh, mud color uh, depending on you know whatever prototype you're trying to mimic but uh, don't forget when you're completely done you can kind of unify unify that look of the uh, corrugated metal okay guys that's going to do it for this episode this is not meant to be all inclusive nor is it meant to be you know the um the expert but this is just some of the things that i've picked up that have helped me and uh, hopefully they helped you as well so uh thanks for watching and good luck out there with your metal buildings and as always, uh, take care. We'll see you on the next video. See you guys.